Hey guys, this is Kaching. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a gift box in Fusion 360. This is a back to basics video where I go through the whole workflow and teach you a couple quick tips along the way. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So here's the gift box that I designed and as you can see there's a nice little bow on top here. It has ribbons. It's actually a functioning box where uh, it's got a thickness and a shelled interior. So I'm going to walk through how to exactly do this step by step. I've started a new design here and the first thing I'm going to do is start with a sketch. And you don't have to click on create sketch to start the sketch. You can actually go to the drop down menu and just pick a sketch tool to start creating. So here I'm going to select center rectangle and I'm going to pick on this top view. And the top view basically you looking down onto that plane. That's why you're kind of on top, right? That's the top view. I'm going to pick the center origin and I'm just going to drop that uh, box down. I'm not going to worry about the dimensions because I can put dimensions down after I've actually uh, completed you know, this sketch profile. So now I'm ready to dimension. I'm gonna press the D key to enable uh, the dimension tool. You can also find it in the sketch dropdown menu, but the D key is the shortcut for dimension. So I'm gonna pick this edge here and I'm gonna give this a, a distance of, let's just say five inches, boxes five inches by five inches here. So now we have a nice, nice five inch box. And now um, this is gonna be the base of our box, uh, but we're also gonna need to create the lid. And to do that, I'm gonna go to the sketch menu. I'm gonna use the offset tool um, and you can press O for offset. Um, and the offset tool allows you to offset a continuous edge, in this case, our box a certain distance. So I'm going to drag this out a bit. I'm going to give this, uh, let's say three millimeters. Oh wait, I'm going to give this negative three millimeters. So it's kind of on the outside, which is great. Okay, cool. Now we've got our offset box. Uh, we've got our base box and I think we're good on the sketch. So I'm going to stop sketch. Okay, now I'm going to use the extrude tool to extrude this inner sketch profile up. So I'm going to select it and right click and click on extrude. Extrude shortcut is E or you can go up to a create and find the extrude tool itself. Um, so I'm going to drag this up and maybe give this also uh, five inches. And now we have a five by five by five box. So now I'm going to go back to sketch in the browser, the sketches folder, and turn on my sketch again. Basically, every time you do an extrude or uh, perform a 3D um, geometry creation, the sketch would turn off automatically. So I went back and turned on the sketch so I can see my sketch here. And I'm going to rotate over and uh, select this, uh, this inner uh, square sketch again and select the outer uh, offset profile as well. And once I've got the two selected, you can see at the bottom it says two profiles selected. So you know you've got those two selected. I'm gonna use the extrude tool again. But this time, instead of extruding it from the bottom, I'm gonna create the lid from the top. And you can do this by going to the start option in the extrude dialog, uh, select from object, and click on the top face to where you want to start. And I'm actually going to give this starting point an offset. And you want to do this because if you start it from here, that lid is going to start from that face and it's going to actually like collide with the the actual box. In in real world that that shouldn't happen. That's not possible. So you want to give it an offset and that's basically the thickness of that um, of that lid, right? So uh, I'm gonna set the offset. I think um, I put three millimeters before, so I'm gonna give this also three millimeters. And now you notice that arrow jumped up a bit. So now we're at three millimeters offset, and now I can pull this down to a specific uh, specific width. Uh, I think I'm gonna make this negative two inches. Yeah, negative one point five. Let's do that. 
Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, cool. And let's say okay. Oh, actually, I shouldn't have clicked okay because I did not want to cut it. So I'm actually going to go back to this extrude, uh, which is at the timeline at the bottom here. I can double click, and now I'm back into this tool. And instead of a cut, I'm going to do a, a new body. Yep, we're going to do a new body from that. So it's not a cut. And now I'm going to say OK. And now we have our lid body and our box bottom box body. So the next thing I'm going to do is use this bottom body to cut the top body. And to do that, I'm going to go to Modify and use the Combine tool. So the combine tool is like a Boolean tool. It, it, it lets you combine bodies together or, or cut them cut them apart. Um, so the target body is gonna be the lid. The tool body is gonna be my bottom box. The operation is gonna be a cut. And we're gonna keep the tool because we still need that bottom box. And now we're gonna say, okay. And now if I go into the bodies folder and hide this bottom box, you can see the lid is cut to the size of the bottom box. And that's why we did the offset. That's why we did it all from one sketch. Okay. Now we're going to hide this lid and now we're going to remove the material within this box. So it's uh, so it's a shelled material and what tool we're going to use. We're going to use the shell tool. So under modify, there's a tool called shell. And we're now going to click on this top face to remove that face and shell it. Uh, you can drag the arrow to see exactly, you know, how much do you want to shell this. I'm going to give this three millimeters just to keep things consistent. Say OK. And now our box is shelled. And now both our lid and our bottom box is ready. Um, right now they're bodies and because the box and lid is part of a, a whole package or a whole assembly in, in the CAD, in the CAD world, uh, I'm going to select these two bodies and convert these into components. So as some of you might know, rule number one, when you start a design is to, uh, create a new component and activate it. That's when you're, you know, that you're working with. Uh, multiple different uh, parts of an assembly. But in this case, this is an example of top-down design where you're, you're creating components based on one sketch. And you can then convert those bodies into components later on, like I just did here. So um, I'm, not, I'm not breaking rule number one, I'm actually sidestepping and using a different uh, concept to model. So here I'm going to rename things because it's always good to rename components. Uh, component one is the bottom box and component two is the top lid. Okay, now we're going to uh, create the ribbon on top. And to do that, I'm going to then again use sketch. So I'm going to go to sketch and use the spline tool. And I'm going to pick one of these planes, uh, the either the, the left or right plane, doesn't really matter. I'll just pick this plane. So I'm going to, I pick the spline command and I'm going to start in the center right here where it snaps to. And I'm just going to draw a quick spline like so right there and click that little check mark. And I'm going to use the line tool again and connect that final point to the, the middle point there. Now we've got a nice little spline. Uh, stop sketch, so I'm back in 3D modeling mode. And to create the 3D geometry of this ribbon, I'm gonna go switch over to the patch command. And this is where patch becomes pretty useful because I can go under the create tool, select patch extrude, and select this uh, this continuous you know line spline edge here. Go to my direction and change it to symmetric and start pulling the arrow to get a, to get a profile. I want a, a, a width of one inch for my ribbon, but uh, since this is symmetric, I'm gonna put this 0.5, so now it makes one inch, 0.5 inches. Say okay, and now I've got a, got a nice, uh, nice little ribbon here. I'm gonna switch over to the model command, and now I'm gonna use a tool called thicken 
to give it a little bit of thickness because right now as a patch, it actually uh, doesn't have any thickness. Um, so as soon as you thicken this this model or this this patch body, it then becomes a solid body. So I'm not even give it that much thickness. I'm just gonna give it like uh, I'm actually gonna give it inward. Uh, I'm gonna give it 0 0.01, right? Uh, I'm gonna give it negative 0 0.01. So just that little much thickness will now convert it into a body. And now you notice the patch the patch body still stays in your browser, but now you've got a new body here, and that's the, the ribbon body. So we've got one, and I want four of these. So let's go to create pattern, circular pattern. And the pattern type is going to be the body. The axes is going to be this Y axis. And automatically it gives you three as a quantity. I want this to be four. Let's say OK. And now we get uh, a pattern of four. Yeah, that's looking pretty decent. And notice that in the browser, you have four bodies now. This typically is just one, you know, one ribbon. It's not four different pieces of a ribbon. Um, so I'm going to, again, use the combine tool. And we're going to combine all of these into one body. So select one of these as target body. doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to select the others as the tool body. Uh, my operation now in stuff cut is a join and I'm not going to care about the tool bodies anymore because I ultimately just want one and say OK. And now I have my uh, bodies combined into one. If I highlight that, that's one body. Wonderful. OK, now that we have the ribbon on there, we need to model the ribbon that goes along the side of the box. And to do that, we're going to go back to sketch. So um, I'm going to go to, again, back to center rectangle. Uh, let's see, where is it? Rectangle, center rectangle. I'm going to pick this uh, front view here. And um, I'm going to turn off this, this ribbon body because I don't really need it. And I'll just start somewhere in the center. Let's just say here, drag it out to there. Um, and then as I actually just accidentally landed on one inch width, that's the that's the the uh, the dimension you want. You want that width to be one inch because our ribbon is one inch. So uh, it's okay that it's a little longer than the, the this rectangle is a little longer than the box itself. I actually want that. Um, so I'm just gonna set that. That's one inch. I can even just go further and say define them. This is one inch. Cool. Awesome. So that's good for this side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the right side. So again, um, a good trick here is that you can actually right click and select repeat center rectangle. So this is basically the last command you've used. You can repeat it over and over and if you continue to use it. Um, so repeat center, uh, center rectangle, click on this right view here. And notice here I have a center dot of that previous rectangle as reference. I'm going to start creating one. Uh, and then let's just drop it and then click D and let's dimension this guy to one inch. And now that's my, uh, that's my other ribbon. Okay, now we need the top part also laid out so that we can model the ribbon at the top here. Um, so I'm gonna go back and repeat center rectangle. I'm gonna pick this top face uh, and then sketch out this rectangle here. So there's that one. And there's this one. And now I'm going to go to the dimension tool. This guy is one inch. And this guy is one inch. All right, so now let's get out of sketch. And now we have all our sketches laid out. Um, and the prep is complete. And now we're ready to cut some boxes. And we're gonna do that by using this tool called Split Face. So what this does, it, it doesn't actually split or cut the bodies themselves, but it cuts the faces so that they're distinctive faces. Let's start with the side boxes. So the face to cut is this guy, this guy, uh, this guy, and this guy. And my splitting tool is going to be this. And boom, look at that. Extended, extend splitting tool. Yes. Uh... This is off, this is on, eh, I can turn it off. Boom, those are cut, 
Let's uh, repeat that guy. So you're basically gonna repeat this a couple times. Uh, this, this face, this face, this face, this face. Splitting tool, uh, it's gonna be you. Boom, and all right, dot split. Let's do this a couple more times. Repeat face. Uh, okay, yeah, this guy, splitting tool, you. So there, uh, now I gotta, I'm gonna turn back the sketch. Repeat splitting tool one more time. And uh, now I'm gonna select these because these just got split. But now I'm gonna use this guy, uh, split tool, boom. All right. Now, uh, if I turn on turn off sketch, now we've got our uh, got our ribbons all laid out. Now, if I turn on the ribbon body, look at that. It's starting to look like a gift box. Uh, this time, I'm actually gonna, gonna create a component out of this body, so I'm gonna convert that. This is gonna be my ribbon bow. <laughs> and there you go. Now let's actually, since now they're all components, we can add a as-built joint. So I'm gonna enable as-built joint and uh, make these two rigid. Say okay, so now when I move the lid, the, um, the bow stays on it. Awesome. Turn off my joint here. And uh, last couple steps is to render this thing. So uh, I'm gonna right click, go to appearance, and this will give me my appearance library. Um, I'm gonna go into plastic, uh, look around here, maybe opaque. So to apply materials to the individual faces, you're gonna wanna change the uh, apply to option from body slash components to faces. This will allow you to apply specific materials to a specific face. And that's why we made those split faces earlier. So I'm basically just gonna apply these like this. This one, da 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 da, and here we go. There you go. That looks pretty nice. This makes me happy. And look at that. Look at how shiny and flaky that is. That's metallic flake, folks. And now you can render it in the cloud or you can do enable uh, in canvas render, 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 and that will give you a really nice render. Okay, so for those of you that watched through the whole video and have come this far, thank you so much, you guys are awesome. And in the spirit of the holidays, we're gonna do a giveaway. So our QA team tests a bunch of different devices that are compatible with the Fusion 360, and sometimes we order too many of them and some of them don't get used. So what we have to give away is a Space Mouse Pro. Uh, we also have a Space Navigator uh, 3D mouse and we have a Space Mouse Wireless. So with these, what I want to see is you make your own version of the Fusion 360 gift box and share it on Instagram and Facebook and your social channels. Uh, tag it Fusion360 with the hashtag. Let's give you guys about a week till December 24th. That's when we will randomly pick three lucky winners to get each one of these. So three prizes, three winners. Um, really excited to see what you guys come up with. Get creative and yeah, talk to you guys soon. Thanks.